Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up your Malware Analysis environment and all the tools we'll be using, as well as some security guidelines to keep in consideration when setting your Malware Analysis lab. Um, so let's get started. So uh, talking about the tools we'll be using, uh, first of all, we have a, a hypervisor, so you can use either VirtualBox or VMware. I'll personally be using VirtualBox. Uh, secondly, you need a Windows 7 VM, uh, so that is either 32-bit or 64-bit. Uh, if you can, a 64-bit is preferable because we do have some tools that require 64-bit architecture. And uh, thirdly, we'll be using Flare VM. Now, you don't have to use Flare VM for those of you who already know what it is. Uh, it essentially is a Windows malware analysis distribution that you can set up. Uh, if you remember, quite a while ago, I made a video on Commando VM, uh, and it was uh, by FireEye, and they make the same uh, the same script, uh, but of, of course this is for malware analysis. So it comes pre-packaged with all the tools that we'll need for malware analysis and it will automate the entire process of setting it up. So I really recommend using Flare VM. Uh, you just need to set it up once and then take a snapshot and you'll be good for a long time. All right, now one important thing to keep uh, into consideration is uh, on your Windows 7 VM, you, uh, you must uh, disable Windows Update and of course Windows uh, the Windows Defender. Right. So, of course, that will uh, avoid any potential uh, uh, discovery by any of these antivirus programs. And as a re result, they'll they'll get rid of the malware. So we don't want any of that. So I'll show you how to disable that as well. Uh, now for some security guidelines uh, when dealing with uh, setting up and maintaining your environment. Right. So the first thing is to obviously keep your hypervisor updated. Uh, so either using VirtualBox or VMware, it's really important that you keep them updated in case of any potential exploits that some pieces of malware have in regards to busting your VM software. Uh, secondly is when executing malware, ensure that your network configuration is set to host only. This is very important uh, as it will avoid any accidental in uh, infection or uh, any accidental execution on your host operating system. Um, so uh, the, the next one is do not plug in any USB devices into the VM. So again, that will avoid any infection of your USB devices, uh, especially hard drives. Just avoid doing that uh, at all costs. Uh, we, we go to the next one, which is make sure you're d uh, you download compressed uh, and password protected samples to avoid accidental uh, accidental execution. So this is very important and it usually is the standard uh, in malware uh, when, when dealing with malware is to obviously compress the binary or the executable and password protect it to avoid accidental execution. So usually uh, the zip or uh, the zip file password will be uh, infected or something like that. Uh, that's something to take into consideration. Uh, make sure you only download samples that have been compressed and secured uh, appropriately. Uh, the next one is to take snapshots. It's very, very important. You want to make sure you always have clean snapshots to avoid any, uh, you know, the fact that you have to reinstall Flare VM again. So again, I'll show you how to do that in a second. And uh, the next one is, of course, do not store any valuable data on your analysis VM. That's something very, very important. Make sure that your documentation is done outside of your analysis uh, VM. Uh, that therefore, uh, again, you, you prevent any any data spilling over onto your host operating system. Um, and of course, lastly, is to disable your shared folders uh, before execution or uh, analysis. So when transferring uh, over binaries, uh, you can make use of the shared folders functionality with uh, your hypervisor, but make, for, uh, make sure you disable them before your execution or analysis, uh, as we have seen many times before. Uh, some pieces of malware uh, do have the ability to mutate through the network. So again, keep that in mind. Uh, that being said, these, th that is pretty much all that we'll be requiring, and those are the security guidelines to keep in mind. Uh, as I mentioned before in the previous video, these slides are available in the description section. You can check them out if you want to. And let's get started with setting up the environment. All right, so we are ready to start setting up our environment. And uh, as you can see, I'm using uh, Ubuntu as my host operating system. I would recommend you do the same. Uh, reason being is you never want uh, your host and your guest operating system to be having the same uh, operating system, of course. Uh, therefore, you know, if there is any accidental uh, accidental execution, you can avoid that uh, if possible. However, if you are on Windows, that's perfectly fine. You just need to take a bit more of a uh, secure approach. Uh, that being said, um, let us check out the tools we'll be using. As I said, we'll be using uh, or we'll be needing a Windows VM. 
uh, Windows 7 VM. Uh, we'll then be taking a look at the Flare VM uh, script right over here. So let's get started. Let me explain a few things when downloading some Windows virtual machines. So uh, part of the new policy that we have at Hackersploit is, of course, um, we are going to have to be going through the legal channels. And as part of YouTube's new guidelines, we need to uh, we need to make things as clear as possible in regards to the legalities of software and, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, when downloading or when using a Windows VM, uh, you want to download it from uh, the developer.microsoft.com, and these are the uh, the Edge, uh, the Microsoft Edge or Internet Explorer uh, version. So you, they essentially are VMs that you can use to test uh, Internet Explorer or Edge, as they call it, Edge HTML. Uh, so you can download uh, Internet Explorer, uh, Internet Explorer version 10, 9, and 8, both on Windows 7 and also 11. Uh, you then have the uh, the ability to download uh, Internet Explorer 11 on Windows 8.1. Essentially, these are all uh, legitimate operating systems with a trial period. So you can see that these virtual machines uh, expire after 90 days. Uh, we recommend uh, setting a snapshot when you first install the virtual machine, which you can roll back to later. So you can use this for a long period of time. And uh, the password uh, for the user and for the zip file is going to be password right over here. So. Uh, by default, I've downloaded the Internet Explorer 10 uh, on Windows 7 no, for no particular reason. Again, if you do have a legitimate Windows 7 license, you, you may want to consider using that as well. You then specify your platform or hypervisor here. Uh, you can see you have the option for VirtualBox, Vagrant and VMware. So I'm going to go with VirtualBox and you can download that zip right over here. Uh, I already have it on my desktop here, so we can actually uh, skip that part. And uh, now let's talk about Flare VM, right? So uh, you can check out uh, the, the links will all be in the description section. Uh, so Flare VM is developed by FireEye. You can check them out as well. Uh, so uh, this is a fully customizable uh, Windows-based security distribution for malware analysis, incident response, and penetration testing, but more so for malware analysis. Uh, and I'll be showing you how to use it. So uh, you want to download your, uh, you want to download this folder here or the zip file. Uh, or you can clone it and copy it onto your VM. But for now, uh, let's just do that. I've already downloaded it to my desktop. And then we have uh, the FireEye installation page where it'll guide you through the installation, right? So we'll be using this as well. Uh, it's a very, very simple installation. Um, so the first thing we want to do is we want to extract uh, the Windows 7 VM uh, zip file here. I've already done that. And we have the OVA file right over here. So you just want to double click on that. Once you have VirtualBox installed, um, it's uh, probably going to tell me that I already have it installed, but uh, I'll give it a different name. I'll just call it uh, Windows uh, 7 and we'll just call it 32-bit uh, or something generic. Again, you can call it whatever you want. I'll give this two CPUs, uh, one gigabyte of RAM is perfect. And for my network adapter, that's perfectly fine. I'll set the settings right now. Um, if you want to increase the uh, the VMDK uh, disk size, you can do that as well, but I'm not going to be doing that because it has enough space as it is. It's about 40 gigabytes. So I'll hit import and uh, we'll wait for this to import. It's going to take a while. So uh, I'll get back to you when this is done. All right, so the uh, OVA file has completed importing and you can see it right over here. It's Windows 7 32 bit as we set the name. Uh, you can see all my other VMs, and this is my uh, the VM that I'll be using for this uh, course. I've already set it up with Flare VM, but the purpose of this video, again, is to show you how to set it up yourself. All right, so let's take a uh, look at a few settings here. Uh, the only settings I want to configure, you can configure the system resources, uh, you know, to, to your liking or to your specification. Uh, nothing special there. I'll go with two CPUs and one gigabyte of memory. That's uh, perfectly fine for me. Uh, for display, I'll set this to, uh, let's see, 64 megabytes and I'll enable 3D acceleration. Um, for my network, uh, this is where things, uh, you, you need to actually configure the host-only adapter. Uh, now, by default on... Um, uh, on VirtualBox, uh, you need to set this up yourself. So you want to go into Global Tools. And as you can see, I've already created my... Uh, so if you click on this drop-down, it'll tell you you have your Virtual Media Manager. 
and your host only network manager. So you want to click on that and right over here uh, by default, you'll have no uh, host only adapters and I've created two. I've already created one that I currently use uh, for my uh, for my primary uh, malware analysis VM, which you just saw, and that is VBox Net Zero. And I created one for this video. So I can remove this one and I'll show you how to create one yourself. So you can just click on create uh, and it'll create one for you right over here. And you can take a look at the properties. Uh, you can configure it automatically uh, or you can do it manually. I like leaving it manually. Uh, so you can give it a, your, uh, any IPv4 address within your subnet. Uh, you then have your IPv4 network mask and you then can configure it as a DHCP server, which is great. And I'll be showing you how to do this when we'll be using a Linux VM uh, for behavioral uh, analysis. But that's for another video. Um, so now that we've set it up, uh, we'll just leave it as it is. Uh, and we can go back to the machine tools and go into settings. Right. And within the settings, we'll go to host only adapter and set uh, the name uh, of the adapter to VBox Net one. All right, now for shared folders, you can enable them right over here. I've already set mine up to be the desktop. That's where I've saved my Flare VM script, which I'll be copying over shortly. So we'll hit OK. Uh, now I have used this uh, VM uh, more than once, and uh, it's likely that my trial period has ended. So uh, in any case, if you, if, it's, if you see it giving me the message that Windows has expired, that's perfectly fine. Uh, I'll just show you how to set everything up. So I'll hit Start right over here. And we'll give this a few seconds to load up. It should just uh, only take a few seconds and it should log us in directly. That's if you're using the VMs uh, from the Microsoft website right over here. Um, so we'll wait for this to start up. And uh, there we are, it'll log us in directly. And uh, it should give us the background info. So there we are, it's giving us the prompt to activate. And this is because I'm using it more than once. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm just going to show you how to set it up. Uh, so immediately you can see it tells us that the our username is Internet Explorer user and your password is your is written right over here. So you want to keep that in mind because uh, the uh, Flare VM script will prompt us to to enter this password. So uh, let us check uh, where we have our shared folder here, which is right over here. And we have the Flare VM master zip right over here. So we're just going to copy that over. And I'm done with the shared folder. So I'll just go into machine settings and I'll just get rid of this right over here. So I'll get rid of that shared folder and hit OK. And as you can see, we do not have an active Internet connection because it's a host only adapter. So we will extract here. We'll extract all of this here and just hit extract. Uh, by the way, you can install any other programs you want. Uh, those could be uh, WinRAR, uh, another browser like Firefox, any other utilities that you like using. That's perfectly fine. Uh, before you actually begin with the analysis. So uh, now that we have the files on, one of the important things you need to do is you need to take a snapshot. Now, of course, uh, it's important that you take the snapshot before you actually start the machine because you're then going to be working with the activation already uh, already on. So make sure you take a snapshot before you begin. So uh, after you've copied the files or before you do it, uh, just take a snapshot of the original Windows 7 VM without Flare VM installed. All right, so once you've taken your snapshot, we're ready to go again, right? So within the Flare VM folder, you're going to have the Flare VM uh, PowerShell script, which is install.ps1 right over here. And uh, we need to execute this using the PowerShell. So um, the first thing you need to do is type in PowerShell and uh, you want to run this as administrator. All right, so now that we have the PowerShell window opened up, we now need to disable uh, the Windows Defender and Windows Update uh, so that it doesn't interfere with the installation, right? So uh, for this, we can just type in services.msc and we can just hit enter, right? And we'll give that a few seconds to load up. And we are looking for Windows Update and Windows Defender, which are all at the bottom. So we have Windows Update and we want to uh, disable this or keep it uh, to disabled. And we want to stop the process. And there we are. So we're going to hit apply and hit OK. So that should uh, prevent us um, from ever having to deal with Windows Update again. Now you're going to go to Windows Defender and you want to disable this and hit stop. Again, we're going to wait for that to stop it and hit apply and hit OK. And there we are. All right, fantastic. So now we can get started with installing the script. So uh, what you want to do, of course, is you want to browse onto the directory. So we're going to say CD if we, uh, we, we are currently in uh, system 32. So we're just going to take a step back. And if we list the directories here, we still need to take a step back and we want to go into users, uh, users. So CD users, uh, we can then say Internet Explorer user 
and we are on the desktop, right? So there we are. And hopefully I've zoomed this in in post-processing so you can see exactly what's going on. All right, so when we are ready to begin the installation, all we need to do is first of all, enable uh, a flag here. And that is the, the flag is to uh, essentially allow uh, the, any files or any scripts to be executed automatically without uh, any, any privileges being granted to it. So uh, to do that, we can type in set. Uh, so we're gonna type in set. Let me just uh, get in here. So we're gonna say set. Uh, and we are setting the execution policy. So set execution policy uh, to unrestricted. So unrestricted, um, there we are. And uh, we then want to hit enter. All right, and it's gonna ask you to confirm this option by typing in Y for yes, and I'm gonna hit enter and we are good to go. So now we want to just, uh, let me just clear this out. And if we list the files in here, we want to execute. So we're gonna browse into the directory here. And we now want to execute the uh, the install dot uh, the, the the PowerShell script. So again, directory here. There we are, and uh, we are looking for the install dot ps one script. All right. So we want to install this. So I'm going to say install dot ps one. Uh, now, before installing it, do note that you do need an active internet connection. So again, you want to go into machine, and you want to go into settings, and you're going to network. And we'll just change this to bridged adapter because we do need an internet connection. Uh, to allow the script to download all the necessary files. So we'll wait for this to automatically configure here and hopefully it will give us an IP address. So we'll just wait for this to configure. Um, so now we can get started. So we can type in install uh, .ps1 or PowerShell and uh, we can then hit enter. All right, now the important thing to take into consideration is we need to enter the correct password because it is going to require to sign back in. So make sure you type it in correctly. So the password is password. So uh, and we hit enter and it's now going to start the installation process. Now the installation process can take uh, from 30 minutes all the way to uh, up, up to two hours depending on the speed of your internet connection. So it is going to restart automatically. I would recommend just letting it uh, do its thing. You can do something else while it's installing. So I'm just gonna skip through this process and I'll get back to you when it's done installing and we are fresh back into the Flare VM. All right, so the installation is complete and I'm back in my current malware analysis box. And this is exactly what you'll get with a few exceptions. The exceptions are that I installed Firefox uh, and WinRAR. So uh, these are just utilities that I like having on board. Uh, otherwise, apart from that, uh, the everything should be exactly the same. Uh, as you can see, we have the Flare folder here, which has a list of all the tools. And uh, we also have the tool list here that has all the disassemblers. So we have Ghidra as well, which is awesome. Um, so in regards to the tools, uh, you have your debuggers. So in regards to your debuggers, you have Oli DBG or Oli Debugger. Uh, we have the X32 DBG or Debugger and X64 Debugger, which is great. Again, X64 Debuggers will only be will only work on a 64-bit uh, operating system. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, in regards to utilities like uh, PEID, we already have that here. We also have CFF Explorer, which is great. Uh, we have all the utilities here. So there we are. We have PEID, we have PE Studio. So it has a list of all the tools you'll ever need for malware analysis. Uh, you have all, you also have some pen testing tools like the Kali Windows binary. So you can take a look at all of that. Um, so that's pretty much it uh, in regards to the installation. Uh, you may, you need to uh, keep uh, everything uh, backed up and you need to take a snapshot of your analysis VM uh, before you actually begin uh, analyzing any piece of malware, which you can see right over here. This is a clean vanilla install. Uh, so I usually have this to revert back to uh, whenever I want to perform a fresh analysis. So uh, that's pretty much going to be it for this video, guys. Uh, I'll be seeing you in the next video. We'll get started uh, with static analysis. So I'll see you then.